Pet Life Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, you're listening to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio. And this is me, Deb Wolf. And I'm kind of smiling because I was listening to the watching TV and they did a promo for a new show I haven't seen yet called The Trades on Crave. But the way they promoted it, they, they quoted the characters having a conversation. And one of them, a guy, says to this woman, did you shave in my hot tub? And the woman answers, no, just my pets. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to watch that show. All right, everybody. Welcome to the show. We've got Jan Olson back on the show again from Loved at Lost Dogs Rescue, where they take dogs from other countries like China, Korea, Iran, Northwest Territories in Canada, California in the U.S., Mexico sometimes, and and they find them great homes here. And how they do that is with a website, and the, the dogs, including that one you're hearing probably, go directly from those countries to homes. Uh, almost a little bit of fostering, but usually not right into your home. So if you wanted to, you could go on her website and uh, look at the pictures of the beautiful dogs. Most, most of them are not as noisy as this one. She's <laughs> Iranian and she has a lot to say. Oh, my goodness. We're going to talk about that because we touched on that a little bit in the last show, how Mexican dogs sometimes come with parasites, how often the Californian dogs are smaller than the others, how the Northwest Territory dogs are often not spayed or neutered. But what's going on with the Iranian dogs? What's their profile? Is it sort of like a reserve dog, skittish? Oh, no. 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 It's not at all. Uh, most of the dogs that come are almost all of them are very friendly and gentle and loving dogs. They're just but almost exclusively. That's true. But part of that is because only really friendly dogs can be rescued from the streets. Yeah. yeah. Right. So aggressive dogs, dogs that are afraid of people or snarl or bark at people, no one's going to rescue them in Iran or any other country for that matter. So the dogs we get, that get rescued are very adoptable dogs, very sweet and gentle. And so that's what we get. If they have any behavioral problems, it's just usually because of the fear they have of having flown halfway around the world and coming to a perfect stranger's home. And they are nervous at first. But that always they always relax, usually within the first few days, sometimes as long as three weeks. But they always chill out and relax and realize they're safe and become the sweet, gentle dogs that we all want. The Mexican uh, rescue dogs I've met were very opportunistic dogs, the kind who would charm tourists on the beach, the kind who would get along with anybody and everyone. Yeah. But yeah. once they get here into a new Canadian home that pampers them, they can get really bratty. <laughs> oh, I haven't found that really. No. Um, at least our adopters have complained about that. Whatever. Well, they won't complain. They put up with it. What The thing is, these dogs are so able to read people and figure out what works in their environment. Oh, they'll yeah. figure out what works in your environment completely. You know, they'll rule the roost with a bunch of bigger dogs that do their bidding, you know. And that's true. They do. Because as stray dogs living on the streets, they have to adapt themselves in order to make themselves appealing so that people will feed them. So they learn to read people and they learn to make themselves very appealing by being friendly and gentle. And that's what they are. That's what they become. Sometimes when they come and they get a home and they realize they're safe and they learn to relax and settle in, that they become more confident. And so, but it doesn't mean that they're aggressive at all. They, they aren't. Mm -hmm. and no, dogs no. Do not become, do, dogs do not become aggressive when they gain confidence. It's the other way around. Dogs are aggressive Absolutely. when they're feeling fearful and as they gain confidence they become more gentle so um but dogs have a right to uh express themselves and uh, let you know what they want uh, so i prefer a confident dog to a submissive dog most dogs that arrive are fairly submissive because they don't know what to expect they're they're afraid they've landed in the home of a complete stranger so they are going to be quite fearful and submissive and nervous at first but then as they realize and it just can take a matter of days they realize they're safe They've found their place in the world, and they finally relax and are able to be who they are. We're going to go to a break and come back, and I'm going to ask Jan, how do you pick the people to adopt the dogs? Stay tuned, everybody, on Animal Party Pet Life Radio. Hey. 
take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Hello, we're back on Animal Party Pet Life Radio, and we are talking to Jen Olson about rescuing dogs from other countries and placing them in homes here. So how do you find the homes here? Okay, so people go to our website and they fill out uh, the first step is to fill out an adoption application. And our adoption application is quite long. We ask a lot of questions because even though the dogs are coming off the streets, that doesn't mean they're not entitled to have a really good home, not just any home. So we have a fairly strict adoption criteria. I am not going to describe our adoption criteria because if people know what they are, that's ten the answers we get on the application. Yeah, exactly. they lie for sure. It's like yeah. the cat rescues you. Will you? Do you have a cat? Or no? I'm going to keep my cat inside, but actually, exactly. Mm, yeah, 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 exactly. So we have a, first of this adoption application, and if that looks good and that meets our adoption criteria, then we do a phone interview with them to discuss some uh, further uh, expand upon some of the answers. And then if that all goes well, we do a home visit. It can be during COVID that was in uh, a Zoom home visit. And now we sort of have kept that going a little bit, but also we do in-person home visits as well. It's really nice to get to meet the person that's going to adopt one of your dogs. And so once everybody gets through the approval process for the dog they've applied, this is all, now they've picked a dog on our website. They go through the approval process and now that dog is the, with the rescuer who has that dog in the country overseas now looks for a flight for that dog to come to Vancouver. And that means finding a passenger willing to bring them as excess luggage because to fly a dog by cargo from halfway around the world is prohibitively expensive. Uh, adoption fees would have to be around $3,000 in order to afford to send dogs by cargo. So we have to find a passenger who will bring them as luggage, which is much less costly. So, um, so if you if you're listening and you're flying from Vancouver to one of these places, return, should they connect with you if they're willing to yes, take that on? Yes, it please. won't cost them, right? You'll pay. No, right? it doesn't cost them anything. We pay the, the cost of the dog's excess luggage cost is paid for by the rescue overseas. So all they're doing is saving a dog. They're not paying one bit. And the, the dog is brought to the airport for them. They don't have to do anything except check that dog in when they when they check in their own luggage. That's it. That's all they have to do. And at the airport in Vancouver, the dog is picked up by the owner of the dog or if it's being fostered by the foster of the dog. So they don't. Need, all they have to do is bring the dog with their luggage to outside of security and the dog is picked up there. So it's, it's, it's virtually effortless for people to do this. What if they're flying out of Abbotsford? They have to come to the Vancouver airport. Have oh, to do Vancouver. You mean okay. if somebody's flying out of Abbotsford overseas? Oh yeah, we can accommodate. Can't that. like Mexico, Abbotsford. There's a lot of people in the Fraser Valley who do that. They go from Abbotsford. I think it stops I, yeah, in Calgary right. and then it goes to like Cancun or whatever. Exactly. So if they're coming back to Abbotsford, absolutely, we have our adopters meet them in at the Abbotsford airport. It's actually much easier at the Abbotsford airport. I than know. I, I love yeah. to fly out of there. It's like an <laughs> yeah. old style airport. It's terrific. It is. So no fuss, no muss. One big room. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so we're going to go to break and come back and tell you how to get on the list, how to help out, how to reach them, and maybe a story or two about some of these families you've made now. Stay tuned on Animal Party Pet Life Radio. Begging to hear more of your favorite show? <laughs> Full episodes of all our shows are available on demand. Go to PetLifeRadio.com to fetch our entire lineup of possum pet podcasts. Also, dig us up in iHeartRadio and iTunes. Let's talk pets. <laughs> Live and on demand only from PetLife Radio. 
Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Hello, we're back with Animal Party, Pet Life Radio, and I'd love to know about, well, first of all, how do people do this? First of all, I would ask that people don't do this casually. Uh, having a dog is not like having a plant. You have a lot of time commitment, exercise commitments, and space in your home commitment. So a dog is like having a child, really, in your responsibilities towards it. So it's not something that you do casually. Oh, I feel like having a dog. I think I'll get a dog. That happened a lot during COVID because people were stuck at home and they wanted company. So they applied to get a dog. We made sure that our dogs that were being adopted to people who wanted a dog during COVID were not going to give up on that dog once they went back to work. So we didn't really find any increase because we were very strict about where the dogs went. And once that happens, once the dogs find a flight to Vancouver, we used to go to the airport all the time and pick up our dogs. I was going to the airport three times a week. And that was more than when I worked as an airline pilot for Air Canada, when I went three times a month. So I was going to the airport three times a week to pick up the dogs and I got burnt out. So we decided we now we created a format where we have all the information that an adopter needs to go to the airport and pick up their dog themselves with somebody, a volunteer there. So that's what we do now. Adopters now go to the airport to pick up their dog, import the dog themselves, because in fact, Canada Customs requires now that the owners of the dogs privately import their dog. The rescue can no longer commercially import dogs. That's not allowed from about 130 countries around the world. That will all went into effect a few years ago. So we had to change our procedure where now the owners have to go to the, the airport to pick up their dog. And then they take them home. Well, that's one exciting pickup. I mean, you always see the romantic couples with the flowers and everything. These people must be standing there with squeaky toys and bones and just seatbelt, doggy (laughs) seatbelt, all excited. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Kids in the way. So, yeah. Okay, tell me about a story. Like a dog that came from somewhere and what his hard luck story and his good ending was. His good ending was. Okay, so we had a, a small dog who came from Iran who had been living on the street since it was born as a puppy. So its only contact with people was generally to be kicked or to be tried to run over because that's what people in Iran do with stray dogs on the street. They will kick them, poison them, or try and hit them with their cars. And actually, I have a dog, a three-legged dog from Iran who was run over by a car and lost her rear leg. So they're nervous, they're scared, and they do not trust people. So one dog, but generally speaking, it doesn't take very long for them to realize that people, not all people are like that. But this one dog that we brought over had, I guess, a particularly terrible experience in Iran and was so terrified that he would hide and he was small enough that he could hide under their sofa. And they could not get him out. They had to keep moving the sofa, trap him. But anytime they let him run loose in the house, he would run back under the sofa. He was so scared. And eventually what they did, and he knew what his favorite treat was, and they would just put it on the edge of the sofa, just where he had to stick his head out to grab the treat. And then a little bit farther, and then a little bit farther until he had to get his whole body out to come in. And he finally learned that if I come out from under the sofa, there's a whole pile of these treats sitting in the middle of the living room floor. So with a little trail of the treats to this pile. So eventually they got him to come out. And every time they came out, they didn't try and touch him because he didn't want to be touched at this point yet. Because for him, touch had always been a hit or a kick, something painful. Yeah. So it, it, it took him a long time to understand that touch didn't have to be that way. In fact, touch felt very good. And eventually they just, just a little bit of petting, a little bit of petting. And eventually one day, just like that, he no longer went under the sofa. And he, in fact, came into the bedroom, lay beside their bed, and then eventually they were able to coax him up onto the bed. And eventually he slept between the two of them with his head on their pillow on the bed. And that took about, I would say, about two months for him to go from not coming out from under the sofa to sleeping with his head on the pillow in the middle of the bed. It always amazes me how, yes, it always amazes me how quickly animals recover because two months sounds like a long time. But if a human was deprived... Well, yeah, but it not is, really. It is a though. long time for dogs. It isn't. Yeah. Because no. Imagine because... years of abuse and right. two months you learn that you you're, you're safe. Yeah. Exactly. Trust and love. Like imagine yeah. a human growing up their entire childhood abused, and then all of a sudden, two months later, they can love and trust. Exactly. It's pretty quick turnaround. You know, dogs really do live in the moment as much as they can. 
it's in their genetic makeup for them to want to connect with us. Right. We bred them for that reason. So it's in them. So it just has to be unlocked. And once it's unlocked, it's like a switch that goes off for them. Okay. So if someone's listening today and they want to get involved, maybe they're taking a trip and they're going to go back and forth and they wouldn't mind uh, having a dog <laughs> get saved on their way back from Mexico or any one of these places, the Northwest Territories, California, uh, China, Korea, or Iran, if you're going there and coming back to Vancouver, or if you would like a dog or you think you could foster a dog, how can they get a hold of you, Jen? Okay, to foster or adopt a dog, uh, they go to our website at loved at last dog rescue. I know that's a lot, dot C-A, L-O-V-E-D-A-T, L-A-S-T-D-O-G-R-E-S-C-U-E, loved at last dog rescue dot C-A. Uh, so that's where you go to apply to adopt or to foster a dog. When you apply to a foster, you don't fo you don't apply to foster a specific dog. Just you fill out the foster application, which is very, very obvious on the website. And then you can put in there what size or type of dogs, if you want to be specific, you'd like to foster. We prefer if people would just be willing to foster any dog, but we do understand that some people have size restrictions in where they live. But to want to help us, uh, bring a dog back from overseas, they can email me at jan, J-A-N, at L-A-L-D-R dot C-A. That's the initials for loved at last dog rescue dot C-A. Okay. And um, well, it was so nice talking to you. How many dogs do you think you, you've helped this way? I personally started out in dog rescue in 2006. So I have been involved with rescuing thousands of dogs from overseas. The last count was 3,500, but that was a few years ago. So we used to, at my former rescue during when it was really, when we were pretty much the only game in town, we're rescuing and rehoming a dog a day. But now there are numerous rescues in the lower mainland and most of them have started with me. So now we have great competition, which is wonderful because more dogs are getting rescued, but fewer from us. So we don't find homes for quite as many as we used to when we were the only game in town, but still we rehome a couple of dogs a week. So, um, yeah, it's in the thousands. Well, thank you very much from everybody at Animal Party, Pet Life Radio, all my listeners. Thank you so much for being so good to animals. And everybody out there, be good to your animals. Thanks for listening. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.